Φίλε και φίλοι, καλησπέρα και καλώ ορίσατε σε ένα ακόμα εκτό πλατό TV World. Είναι μαζί μα η Μέιχεμ εκ Νορβηγία. Και ποιο άλλο, ο εκλεκτό συνάδελφο συνεργάτη του Πολιτικού Τόλου Γιωβανίδη, ειδικό στην Νορβηγολογία. Hello guys, welcome to Greece. Thank you. Once again, how does it feel being here? Uh, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, it's like two and a half years. Two and a half. Yeah. And uh, last time it was looking great. So let's go to the mm -hmm. city. So Mayhem is on tour now. Or is uh, one of uh, three of shows? Yeah, it's uh, three of shows. We uh, actually done the European tour. We finished the European tour in uh, November. Uh, Uh, we're sorry we didn't include uh, Greece and that one, but uh, it was impossible. So uh, we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, after Greece, what's on the program? Um, we're uh, heading for the States to uh, promote our uh, new uh, live album, which also features uh, pre production material from uh, pre Grammy Croatian Award. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like different versions of the songs which appears on that album, uh, which we actually did before we entered the, the real studio. So it's like, it's a more uh, straight in the face versions of uh, some of the songs from the Grammy uh, Croatian mm -hmm. uh, There were some fans that, uh, the hardcore metal fans that didn't like the approach in the Grammy direction, they wanted some, something more rough. Yeah. You're doing this for them? <laughs> well, no. Um, uh, I think that they should listen to the album. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the main feeling is absolutely there, yeah. and uh, the music is a bit more difficult to get into. It's not straightforward black metal, mm -hmm. but it's very, uh, very much intelligent. Very, it's thinking metal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. so listen. Speaking about this thinking metal, you're the actual cause of mayhem nowadays shape. Has that hit you hard on your normal everyday life? Um, not really, because uh, mostly I live like that every day, day to day anyway, so uh, <coughs> I think the album is just progress of uh, mainly about our normal lives, actually. It's, um, it's a natural progression, yeah. you know, um, I think we can, um, I think the last song on the book service actually represents uh, the beginning of, of the new uh, a new way. Yeah. Like, uh, it's we want to progress. I mean, if you're standing standing still in like ten years, then there's something wrong with your head. Right. You progress as human. You progress as musician. So it's a result of of, uh, of just growing up. That also like being be more, more mature. You know? That also includes burning bridges, I guess. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, we could have done the same kind of music for years and years and on, on end, but then I would have quit my aim because then my aim wouldn't be what my aim should be. And as a band, it's always been in front of me. I don't like the term burning bridges because I think they're always, <coughs> they have always the same atmosphere and the same spirit. You That's know? true. But in, uh, in my as a band, we will never, uh, we can't pretend we're true to ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what my aim is, you know, mm -hmm. totally true to the next page person. What we hear is actually us. And uh, I think that grand decoration is something that um, people should uh, grow into and listen to because it's very uh, anti everything. It's very, it's possibly the most anti album we could have done um, in every way. And then turning against your own tradition. I don't, I don't see it as turning against our own tradition. I mean, Mayhem has always done the unpredictable. I mean, nobody could see after hearing Death Trap who could foretell Demi Spirit. Nobody can, uh, could do that. And that became a standard, you know? And we're trying to do, we're doing it again. We're going further. And maybe, hopefully, in a couple of years, people will see us, okay, they have done it once again. You know, they set new standards. We have to explore the mind, we have to go further, we cannot stay in the same thought pattern as we did when we were like walking in fifth grade in school. You know. I think you just said very, one very important thing, explore the mind, because um, I think that's one of the main parts of the Grand Decoration album, is that you really go further inside your own mind and uh, to develop yourself and uh, um, 
go beyond what normal people do, you know, because we're not normal. We're not. So what does it actually take for someone to be a mayhem at this point in time? Two things, two principles. You want to be a mayhem clan? No, no, no. To be, to be a mayhem part of the mayhem gang, so to speak. Uh, that's uh, anything. anything. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, when we started out uh, at the Romanus uh, the skill, we started out in October '94, and we uh, at once we we sensed this feeling within the band that this was the right thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. this was still the two mayhem. You know, the feeling we sent and. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anything more to say. It's, it's the feeling. In you, yeah. Instinctive impulse and the joy of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and I think also that uh, he says a very important thing because, um, I mean, when I met Hell Hammer after you know, Mark was killed, and I went to the rehearsal place and they was like, yeah, you want to start a man again? And I was like very reluctant about it and just, mm, maybe. And we started playing and it was like, fuck, <laughs> this is like, the monster again, you know, and that's the way may have always been. I mean, we're four totally different individuals, and we, in the past, there were also four totally different individuals, you know. That's what creates the, and the essence. Yeah, of when you get together, and then it's like you get this atmosphere, this thing that's it's totally unexplainable, actually, because um, if you haven't, if you have not experienced it, then it's impossible to explain it. In many ways. The next album is going to be called Sumera, mm. the mythical beast from the Greek mythology. Can you give us a primary draft of its lyrical symbolism? <laughs> just a small one. The lyrical symbolism there is so oh, just fucking. The primary draft. It's uh, very. Um, um, hang on a second, because I haven't found the words. I have to cut this out. <laughs> it's very complex. Very, very complex. And the lyrics is very long. Like the head of the monster. Yeah. Yeah. So many heads. It is. As much as you exactly. can. Exactly. That's, that's and the, no, and that's, about, no that's the whole chimera. lyric. It's, right. Uh, the, um, yeah. There are no many heads in Chimera. Chimera has the different, head, the head of a lion, different. the tail of a snake, exactly. the that, body of a goat, and everything. the feet of a... That, yeah, is that, that is uh, and, that and the that's and, of and right. I think the end as of the song can. pretty much sums up mm -hmm. the whole fucking idea about it. The end of the song. Mm -hmm. I think that's Kimura, something. Kimura was killed by a hero, you know that? I know, yeah. but the end of the song mm -hmm. turns against that. Uh -huh. ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you play the role of a hero? No, no, uh, the, the hero <laughs> dies. But There's no fucking hero. <laughs> no, but the, the thing is, at the end of the song, mm -hmm. it turns around. And then it's the last sentence is, uh, all you ever knew equals zero. Well, and that's uh, that's the whole that's the whole essence of the whole song. Nihilism? Nah, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, very much nihilism for me. Uh, but at the same time, it's uh, I'm I'm a very skeptic person. I'm very nihilistic, actually. But um, but at the same time, I love my life. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, fuck me out. <laughs> okay, you, you no, learned no, it. Comes. No, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's, um, take your time. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, yeah. Take your time. It's a song that evolves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have still not heard his musical directions on it. But what I can say, uh, it, lyric wise, is that. It evolves all the time, and it turns back, and it goes mm -hmm. forward, and it turns back again. And at the end, it's just like it sums up everything. Mm -hmm. It sums up everything we believe in. Yeah. When you are composing, because, yeah. because the end of that, that lyric is what we believe about the human race. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think. When you are composing a new album, when you are writing the lyrics and you compose the music, uh, do you have in mind the Mayhem fans that you have to do something for them? Or do you just do whatever you want and let them follow if they want or not? Um, I don't bear in mind, if I uh, was supposed to bear in mind that, oh, the Mayan fans uh, must uh, enjoy this, then I have to put myself within the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Am 
I hate squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate popping squares. I hate to be put inside something mm -hmm. in a box. I want to be a free individual. I do whatever I fucking want to do. And um, if people have a problem with that uh, and don't like the music that they just fuck off. But I think that's one of the do I think that's one of the main things about Mayhem yeah, always in been, itself. Always been. It's like always that. been. Because I mean, I knew your own was very good, and he was also like that. I mean, don't do like other people expect you to do, or you don't do it because of that, but you do it because you feel you do what you feel mm. like doing. So I think. And if he, I mean, if he started writing music, like the old man fans really would like to hear, then I would quit. Would it would be against my nature as well. No, but, uh, but it would, yeah, it would be so very unnatural. Uh, the visibility in the uh, next album, as you see, I can walk away from the black metal borders. No, because uh, no. Uh, the black metal is the very essence of Mayhem. Mm -hmm. Mayhem yeah. can't be anything else, uh, no matter what we do on Ground of the Rest That's World. Uh, no matter if they have a slow song or mm -hmm. some electronic beats or whatever, everything is black metal. Yeah. The, the core is black metal. Uh, that uh, is one thing that Mayhem always will be, mm -hmm. no matter what we fucking do. Mm -hmm. Because I think that black metal has always been for Mayhem to be against uh, pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And um, black metal for Mayhem is not, it has never really been a satanic thing. Because um, the way that Dead wrote lyrics, it wasn't. Uh, in a satanic way. In my eyes, mm -hmm. it wasn't. In my eyes, he wrote lyrics in his heart and his mind. And that wasn't very satanic. It was very dark and it was very occult, but it wasn't very satanic. And what about your writing? My writing, it's... <laughs> um, well, my writing expands from, from like occult stuff, from Wolf's Robes, to to the more philosophical stuff um, and uh, it's like to expand the mind really uh, and if that means that you have to go in a dark way or a light way I don't give a shit as long as I can expand the mind okay. and, but, uh, and but the uh, same thing the essence of our nature is yeah. very dark you know? yeah so yeah, yeah. Can of course be, like, but then if you want to be really dark then you have to touch the light as well because unless you know what light is, then you can't be dark. Yeah, that's right. Do you quarrel during rehearsals? <laughs> <laughs> we quarrel all the time. Well, uh, we quarrel to, all the to time. be honest, I'm a bit Stalinistic it's when asshole. it comes to... Uh, at least the guitar thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking asshole. Yeah, I'm a yeah. fucking asshole. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, um, I have this vision, you know, when I write new music. Mm -hmm. It sh should sound like this. Sound like that, and no, don't play that. It's wrong. <laughs> I'm very, I have a very straight, very open, very, um, I'm very secure. I know what I want. Mm -hmm. I know what I want to hear. You know. So. What, what do you do to chill out yourself when you quarrel in the studio? Have it a layer or something? Uh, well, actually, when we're in the studio, we we're, we're not there at the same time. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> No, in the studio, it's not much quarreling, yeah. actually. No. Because then, no, then we know what to do, yeah. you know. Uh, the all, all comes... Uh, actually, to be honest, I get uh, pretty much uh, free space, you know. Yeah. Uh, I can do uh, whatever I want to because I think the guys have such confidence and trust in me uh, as a musician. So, um, so I, I, don't, I haven't had any problems. Yeah. Do you feel it having any? Absolutely see. not. No. <laughs> we learned that you asked when the band first singer, Messiah from Bowman, to participate on one of your concerts in Oslo. Um, I don't I know if you've done it yet, but I you may call the next time on one of your concerts. I did not do that. Yeah. Well, about Messiah, you're a former, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. former, former yeah. singer. Yeah, um, a couple of uh, months before we did uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. show in, in Oslo, mm. we we wanted to be a, like a big party, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like a big happening, uh, and we wanted to, uh, or, like we were playing with the idea to bring in Messiah, uh, who actually sang on the Witching yeah. Hour and Kill Pop, Kill Pop, Kill Pop, Kill Pop, Kill Pop, Kill Pop and Death Cult album. 
um, to, to just do some stuff, maybe just uh, maybe cover a witching hour or something, just to how have, did, you know, fun. <laughs> yeah. How did you react when you told them? We haven't, we didn't actually no, come we didn't this far. <laughs> we just there. thought, you know. Oh. So, um, uh, he's, but uh, yeah. he's a sharp skinhead now, so I don't know. Um, what is the thing that fascinates you most about war? Do you all those very particular statements on war? I think the thing that fascinates me most about war is that uh, people are actually able to do it. Um, because when you get into, when you push people far enough, then they're actually able to do pretty much everything, mm -hmm. and that's that fascinates me. Because um, at least in Norway, which is a very very civilized country in many ways, uh, yeah, no, but uh, apart from the drinking, <laughs> yeah. but I mean Sweden and Norway, it's it's like the social democratic countries in the world, you know. And I think that what fascinates me really is that when you really get to a point, like when you can get people to do everything, you can get people to rape 12 year old girls, you can get people to chop off each other's heads. And, and what fascinates me is where does that point begin? And that fascinates me really because, and I've, I've been reading a lot of philosophy and stuff like that, and, and where does one thing begin yeah. and where does one thing end? It's like, uh, I mean, what made one of Europe, Europe's most evolving countries uh, art artistically, philosophically, uh, music-wise be under a nation of Hitler? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how did that happen? Right. And that fascinates me. How can you get uh, I don't know how many people live in Germany. I think it's about 56 million or something. But it's a lot of people. And how can you get them to stand straight up and do it like this? Mm -hmm. How can you do that? And actually, I w went to a Pink Floyd concert in Oslo. And they were playing a song called Run Like Hell. Mm -hmm. And there were 30,000 people. And they were doing like this. And then it, it bugs me. How, what kind of psychological thing is it? That makes people go like that. Hypnotized. Yeah, uh, yeah, partly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's there's got to be something more, and and that's what uh, really inspires me about it. And and um, the brutality of war, I can actually see. Uh, I'm, I mean, I've never been to a war myself, but but the brutality of a war, there's actually a little bit of beauty in it. There is. Uh, well. You spoke about the welfare state of Norway. I think that must be what feeds your fire to be so much anti everything. Or not? Pretty much. Uh, a lot of it, yes, because, uh, I mean, we live like uh, quite outside of the society. Very much outside of society. I mean, we don't participate that too that much in society at all. And then, and then everything is so perfect, everything works, everything is like that and everything. And then you're gonna, you're gonna turn 20, you're gonna get a job, you're gonna get a child, and you're gonna get a job, and you're gonna have to keep that job until you're 65. And then so the normal job is the focal point of yeah, the day, I mean, sort of. Yeah, because that, it fucks up too many people, I think. Yeah, I, I think that. So society is not uh, perfect at all. It's like imperfect. Mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways, look out, look for the outsiders. Uh, there's many holes in the, in uh, the system. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, how can I put it? It's, uh, for me, it's a prison in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. It is. You're, you're a prison. Uh, you're very in a way stigmatized uh, as a human being. And uh, actually, the most, uh, which I think is uh, most interesting is uh, why people don't, or how they can't uh, actually go outside themselves and look at themselves. Uh, yeah, in what situation they are in, you know? And um, that's one of the main 
themes on Grand Declaration of War, uh, uh, on the second part. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, let's change our topic a bit. Let's talk about live band performances. Uh, Mayhem has a very special stage soul, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, with a big head on front stage. What's the role of that? Uh, first, it was, uh, I think it was meant to be a, not a joke, but it was like a, a cool idea, you know. It's not very raw, very oh, brutal, yeah. you know. So, ah, oh, fuck, let's have it on stage. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it just became a, a symbol for man. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I think it like uh, represents the essence and uh, the purity of extremity mm -hmm. and the brutality which we actually uh, put forward on stage. Mm -hmm. And do you have uh, in mind to do something like that in the future? Not a big head, but something similar? Something oh, may I will always be extreme, you know, may I mm -hmm. are extreme will always be because we're extreme people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we will use the pig head uh, for like uh, 10 years uh, from now on, but we will definitely do something very, very extreme. Mm -hmm. You will uh, do this even in the Muslim countries, the pig head? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What about <laughs> India or Asia? <laughs> I mean, that's There's sort a of problem. Of him for something greater. I don't care. I mean, if they don't respect that, then fuck off. Because um, that's we will never compromise no. on that. No. Uh, because if we do, if we um, uh, let's uh, say, uh, okay, let's do the show without, uh, then it's not a complete man. Okay, we have done many, like many, many shows without, mm -hmm. without, but then it's impossible to get hold of. Yeah. We have to, we have to do the best out. And of the thing is that. If you do that, that would be like me doing uh, bloodshed with theater blood. Yeah, with I mean, blood. I would never do that with fake blood. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what the fuck? If you if you look into uh, a lot of magazines nowadays, I won't mention any bands, but uh, you can see uh, that it's all fake. You know, they're like, oh, uh, so very. So know, much blood and yeah. so much pain, mm -hmm. so much torture, and it's just Act, like plastic it's and fake so blood and shit. plastic, you know. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, it's like, oh, this this looks brutal. Uh, you this know, looks there are some bands that started this kind of so back in the seventies or in the eighties. Like Alice Cooper used to yeah. have a lot of blood, or was or Lizzie Borden. They were original. Yeah, it's like a yeah, but they didn't use the real blood, did they? No, or something. But I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, uh, as a as a uh, well. Obviously it does. <laughs> the only yeah. person I know, the only person I know, uh, well, I don't know, I mean, I know, do not know him personally, yeah. but the only person I know about who's actually done that on stage using his real blood is Iggy Pop. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's actually done it. And I fucking admire him. There was another it. guy from that stage, J.J. Allen. Ah, uh, he, he's a piece <laughs> of shit because he was shitting on the stage. Okay. <laughs> he, he was a piece of shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, guys, that was a TV uh, section of our interview. Let's say something to the fans of Mayhem. All right, um, hopefully see you all uh, during Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, have a whatever. Peach picking time Peach in Georgia. Picking time. Yeah. <laughs> no, just stay true. Yeah. <laughs>